The purpose of this training video is to support all CTLs in the completion of combing charts ready to assist the timetabler in the construction of a new whole school uh, timetable cycle. Combing charts are now fully automated based on electronic spreadsheets and whilst the example shown at the moment describes mathematics uh, this is the same format for all subjects across the curriculum. The design of the table is the same. The members of staff making up a department team are listed on the left hand side of the table. Each column from 1 to 48 represents an individual teaching period irrespective of whether it's in week A or week B. The maximum is therefore 48 periods. Two development periods on a Wednesday make up the 50 period fortnight. Individual teaching staff will have a load and this shows the maximum number of teaching periods that should be allocated to them. Once allocated the number in the difference column will decrease accordingly. If highlighted yellow it means an individual teacher still has some periods to give. When the box turns green it means the member of staff is fully loaded. If the number should turn red it means a teacher has been overloaded with periods and some need changing and redistributing. Every year group is colour coded as shown in the table and once information is entered it will colour code automatically. For all year groups once the total number of periods required to staff the timetable are in place then the word met will appear in the table as shown. And a final message which currently is indicated in yellow will turn green to say that all periods required for the subject department have been allocated. So the structure is the same for all departments and entering the information is fairly straightforward. Let's say for example we wanted to enter um, year 11. In the case of maths year 11 is in two half year populations 11a and 11b. And once the information has been entered, it's easy to copy and paste cells into different teaching staff uh, to save typing in each individual box. There are different considerations for different subject areas, so these will be dealt with later, but here's a few general do's and don'ts. With post-16 classes, there's a temptation to schedule different year 12 periods together. The example just entered would be impossible. It would be impossible to schedule because students can only be attending any one subject at any one time and to put together maths in pool A and maths in pool B would represent a clash for a proportion of students. So it's important at post 16 that individual teaching pools from A to E are combed in different parts of the table. This will become clear when we look at examples for particular subjects. So in this example I'd need to delete 12B and reposition it into an area where it wouldn't present a clash. The same principle applies in year 13. In many subject areas 
classes in year 8 and 9 and 10 are also blocked. In year 7 many of the classes are linear and linear classes can be scheduled much more flexibly for example 7C can be seen to fill in some of the spaces previously not utilised. Once all the information on the combing chart has been entered you'll notice that the allocated column shows the number of periods combed in and the difference continues to be shown between the allocation and the load in the difference column. Once an individual curriculum team leader is familiar with how to input information into the combing chart, it is then important to refer to previous examples in order to make sure that the combing chart is filled out as accurately as possible.